Okay gang, so we're back on the monitor chassis repairs for today. Uh, just on the heels of that Bloodstorm arcade cabinet build. I got a chassis here I need to get fixed in between the time from I got that one done and the next project will be the Time Killers build. Uh, those of you who are familiar, if you're watching this in the future, I got those two MK cabinets. One of them I converted to Bloodstorm. The other one I'm going to convert to a Time Killers. I'll start that uh, this coming weekend from the date of this video being posted. But uh, in the meantime, I have about a week to go, so there is this uh, Geo 7 I need to get fixed up, and as you can see, it is in partial vertical collapse. Uh, disregard the rolling screen here, I don't have the sink hooked up properly, I just wanted to get a video here with the TPG to see what it's doing. But yeah, partial collapse, and I already know what's wrong with it, so let's dive in and get it fixed. And as I'm removing this, I want to go ahead and talk about discharging. So everybody knows by now, you should be familiar, that you know, you take a screwdriver and you clip the alligator clip to the frame, other end to the screwdriver, and you take the screwdriver and you, you know, stick it underneath the anode cap and you discharge to the frame. But it's generally a good idea that while you have the tube sitting off of the, or well, I'm sorry, while you have the chassis sitting off the tube and the tube's off to the side while you're working on the chassis, uh, especially if you just had it running, it's a good idea to go ahead and just leave this connected here. So we take the, the alligator clip and just clip it into the anode hole. And the other side you clip to the frame and this will prevent it from building up a charge from electricity going through in the air because there is a small chance that even though you've successfully discharged it, if it sits over off out of the way for an hour or two hours while you're working on your chassis, you go to hook it back up, you could get a very small shock because the tube could re-capacitize uh, itself, if you will, while it's sitting out here in the open, the anode hole is exposed to the outside air. Normally it's not because this is connected, but when it's exposed to the outside air, it can actually generate uh, a, a charge because the tube itself is just basically a large capacitor. So you want to kind of leave a, a thing hooked up here if you're going to be having this off for a while. So I'm going to leave this connected while I pull the chassis off. And this is getting in, in the habit of doing this, and that'll prevent you from getting a little zap when you go to hook the anode cap back up. All right, so this GL7 does not belong to me. It belongs to somebody else who already did the rebuild on it. They did the reflow and the cap kit and the flyback and all the general stuff. B plus is set to 120. Uh, it's actually 119.1, so we'll get it closer to 120. I'll clean and wipe the B plus pot, show you how to, show you how to do that. But uh, yeah, I already know what the problem is with this, so let's talk about it. So, vertical deflection. There are two control transistors here, or ICs if you will, for the vertical circuit. They reside on these two heat sinks. There's also a couple other resistors and stuff in here, but when you have partial collapse like this, it usually means one of these two transistors is bad. So let's show you how to test these transistors and get a, a good uh, overview of the ease of the process here. And I say ease of the process, but this darn thing's not going to sit up for me. Let's try it like this. There we go. Okay. So we put our meter in diode mode. We take our red lead and we go to the base of each one of those two transistors. And you should get a 0.5 voltage drop between the base and the emitter and the base and the collector with the red lead on the base in diode mode on both of these transistors. So if we zoom in a little bit here, you can see that one transistor is, there's a lifted pad here on the C4 weight we have to fix. It's kind of lifted up off of there. but. Uh, that is uh, digression. I am digressing. So, um, yeah, X402 and X401. So if we go to, you put your red lead on the base, which is the B, and then the collector and emitter should be 0.5 voltage drop to each one. So if we zoom back out a little bit here, and we go uh, X401, we'll start, so we go base on red lead, emitter should be 0.5 voltage drop, collector should be 0.5 voltage drop, and we don't get it. See what's happening there? In compa uh, comparison here, uh, the base on X402 to emitter, 0.5 voltage drop, collector, 0.5 voltage drop. We go back to 401, emitter, 0.5 voltage drop, collector, Wah, wah. So we have, a, we have a faulty X401. Now to verify this, I have another G07 here that is in perfect working condition. And if we do that same test, we'll go 
X402 base to emitter, 0.5. Collector, 0.5. 401 base to emitter, 0.5. Base to collector, 0.5. So we have a faulty X401. So let's replace it. And I'm 100% positive that will solve the problem. Now these are 2SD1138. Now both the same part number. 2SD1138. I have three of these on hand, so we'll grab one and install it, and that will fix our problem. So 401 here, okay? I'm going to turn my little fan on here. Hopefully it doesn't interfere or create a vibration noise or something, so let's get this one out of the way here. Okay, and where's the braid? Here it is. 401, 401, right here. All right. Where, oh, where did my 401 go? Oh, where, oh, where can it be? I found it here in front of me. I have nothing else to say. Okay. Quick and easy. Let's unscrew this. Oh, where, oh, where can it be? And out of curiosity, we'll put it in the component tester and see what it reads in the component tester. Oh, man. Stuck on yourself, you whore. All right. Get rid of our leads. Let's straighten this out a bit here. There we go. Oh, that's creating a... The screen was creating a little change in the exposure there. Alright, so one, two, three. Close that. And let's see what this shows. Diode. Proof positive. <laughs> Faulty transistor. Now, if we take a good one and put a good one in here. <laughs> good one. So, we'll put a good one in here and it should say transistor. Instead of diode, it should say transistor. There you go. So, absolutely faulty transistor. Now, we'll put this back up here. And, yeah, D1138, 2SD1138. We'll use those. Is this one original? Oh, see, that one's different. See, here we have D1138 in there, as you can see. Maybe not. Uh, but this one looks like an alternate of D401 Alpha, so that's that's suspect a little bit. Uh, okay, let's see if we can make this work here. Actually, I need to clean this off a little bit. That's well, way back there. There we go. We'll get the screw through here. And 
we got to make sure that our leg is not touching the heat sink. That would be bad. And okay, it is not. Make sure that center leg is not touching that heat sink. I I say that, but you know, in all honesty, it probably doesn't matter. I'll bet you that it, that's that's. I bet it doesn't matter because I'll bet the center leg actually has continuity to the... That's why it's the amateur channel. I bet you... Yeah, see, it doesn't matter. That's normal. The center leg is the the frame here, so... Uh, even if it was touching, it wouldn't matter. Okay, well, still, you don't want it to touch. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be an issue, but... I think uh, it's not supposed to touch there because it's not touching from the original, so... All right, so with that in there, let's go ahead and solder this puppy in. Okay. Man, I am not doing well today on this. There it is. I'm trying to find it in the viewfinder because I get lost sometimes in the sea of solder joints. Uh, all right. Well, that's, those are barely through there. But they're through there. And we'll reflow this one. And there's a whole bunch of solder joints on here that still need reflow. That they, There was some partial reflow done to this but not a complete reflow. So I'm gonna go through and do a complete reflow. But for the purposes of the video, we'll just go ahead and test it, make sure it's working. And that cap there has a lifted pad. Let's make sure it has continuity. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. All right, well, um, now it's time to test that again. Let's zoom out a bit and hopefully we get our 0.5 voltage drop. So red lead on base and base to emitter, 0.5, base to collector, 0.5. Hachi machi. Doop, as we knew it would because this was reading bad. So I'm going to put uh, this back on the tube, put my parts away here. Parts away! And do a little cleanup. Actually, I forgot. Hold on. We need to clean up this B plus pot here real quick. And one other thing is, uh, do I have it still? Yeah, I don't know. Not sure where it went, but regardless. So when you change these flybacks out with the new flybacks, the wire here that comes up through from the bottom of the flyback, it needs to run through the little hole there. So there is right in there, see that wire is going, the white wire here is coming through that, that little hole. So when you attach this to the side of the frame, there's a little hole there. That wire needs to come up through there. A lot of times people replace these flybacks and don't do that. That wire needs to come through that hole and then it needs to go up here and, and solder to the focus block. But it needs to be a short wire. So that wire is like, I don't know, a foot long. It's like this long. It doesn't need to be that long. So to aid in the function of the flyback, a lot of times these flybacks will explode shortly after installing them and they get a bad rap. I think that's because a lot of people aren't installing them correctly. When installed correctly, they really don't have much of a problem. So part of that installation properly doing it is that wire, you want to cut it to length. So you run it through that open in the flyback there, inside of there, I just explained, and then go right up and make a little bend and solder it on. Uh, but the ex excess wire here, cut that off. That wasn't like this on this one. I did that kind of preemptively. So the extra, I don't know, six inches or so of wire that was on here, I cut that off and re-soldered this onto here. So when you change these flybacks out, run the wire through that hole or that opening and just run it right to here. It doesn't, and the extra length, cut that off of there. You don't want that on there. It's detrimental to the operation of the flyback. Um, don't ask me why, because this is the amateur channel. So uh, I'm gonna take some contact cleaner here. And we are going to spray this B-plus pot. 
and just wipe it back and forth. I spray a little bit more back and forth, back and forth. This will help aid in the longevity of this pot because it sits in one spot for so many years and develops oxidation on the, the wiper. So this cleans all that up and makes it last a while longer. So we'll put it right about back. This is all the way up. So you're gonna go right about there, a little bit less. You really can't see, I'm sorry. Um, we're gonna go all the way up right there and then just a little bit less. So that should be somewhere around 120. It was 119.1, so we'll adjust as necessary, but okay, this will all evaporate very quickly. So let's get it back on the tube and fire it up and see if our collapse is gone. All right, so all hooked up back on the tube. We got our B plus here set to read our voltage. Uh, you hook your positive lead to that leg of the resistor there. Negative, of course, goes to the frame. Got the TPG all hooked up. So um, let's see if our collapse is fixed. One, two, three. Okay, and I, oh, it's fixed already because I turned up the screen pot. And yeah, there it is. Uh, turn our screen pot back down a bit. And there you go. Sweet. Um, now, holy crap, 126. Um, let's turn that down a bit. Uh, I'm going to turn it off. And we're going to turn that down slightly. Actually, turn it up a little bit to turn it down. So we'll go right about there. 119.7, 997. Close enough to 120. We don't need to mince uh, adjustments. <laughs> That's a saying. So we need to adjust our horizontal hold here. Um, where are we? H freak. You're a freak. Hmm. There we go. Now, vertical freak. Or vertical hold. Bada boom! There you go. I got my. Uh, I'm not going to adjust screen size or position because this is set to the game, whatever it came from, from the person who owns this, but, or colors. I'm not going to adjust any of that. But, um, do, do, do we are upside down, so we need to flip the vertical. And I think the vertical is, um, my connector here is in four pieces instead of the one piece. And I'm pretty sure it's gray and brown. Let me look here real quick. Um, vertical is gray and brown, yeah. So we will flip our brown and gray around. That should get us right side up again. Okay, and here we go. One, two, three. Okay, back on. And what do we get? Ta-da! Okay, let's make sure we have RGB. Yep, it looks terrible. Um, the red is good. You see, I zoom in, the red's good, but as I zoom out or pan out, it looks darker because of the, folk, the exposure on the camera. But, um, you know, if I look at it like this, you can see it's got RGB. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I could adjust colors and stuff, and this tube is old and tired. That's why it's a test tube. But uh, the problem that this was sent to me for has been solved, and our B plus is still good at 119.8. We'll call that good. Like I say, no need to, it doesn't need to be 120 exactly, uh, but that's close enough. And it works. So, yep, we had a faulty uh, transistor here. So if you got a problem like this in the future, you know what to look at and how to test it and what to do. So I do need to go through and do a little bit more reflow and clean this up a bit, but uh, otherwise it's fixed. So hopefully you learned something. Glad I can put this knowledge out there. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more information. <laughs> More content, I should say. More content. I have, I think, uh, 
I have I haven't shown it yet on the channel, but I have three large tubs of chassis and two boxes and some donations and all that stuff has to get <laughs> completely gone through. So there won't be any end to uh, content for a long time. It just comes down to me having the time to get to it and start working on it. But um, this was a, I knew this was be a be a quick and easy one once I opened it up and checked those transistors and found that one being bad. So I knew it wasn't going to be too difficult. But otherwise, yeah, thanks again. Stay tuned for uh, the Time Killers project. That'll be fun as well. And I appreciate it. And we'll see you then.